Okay, here we are back at Mr. Rotter's neighborhood, uh, AKA my garage. Uh, the, uh, the, here's the video that I've been wanting to do for a while. Uh, I tried to get it up yesterday and unfortunately I just ran out of time trying to do it. Um, but first things first, uh, I just wanted to say my thoughts and prayers go out to uh, Jim Bennett's family. Uh, I just saw on uh, Uncle Tony's video that uh, Jim had passed away and it's kind of ironic. I was just talking to him a couple of days ago. He was going to come pick up a uh, 455 remain seal from me. Um, uh, it's unfortunate that these things happening uh, and, and I feel so sorry for uh, the family, but Jim was a great guy. So uh, like I said, you know, thoughts and prayers go out to his family uh, and friends. So um Without getting sidetracked too much, uh, I'll get into this video. Uh, and today it's all about compression ratios. It's uh, calculating your static compression ratio. I don't know if, I, I'm sure there's quite a few videos here on YouTube that does, that tells you exactly the same thing. Um, but this is how I do it. And I use the uh, basic home economy kit stuff and figure things out myself and you know, online calculators. I, I pretty much go to Summit Racing to use their online calculator for compression ratio for just about everything I do. So uh, stick around and I'll show you how to do it. Okay, so here's the basic stuff that you're gonna have to uh, somewhat have and you can kind of flub on some of these things if you can figure out how to do it. But um, I, I try to do things generally on somewhat the cheap and I bought this uh, economy uh head cc and kit from comp cams probably 20 years ago uh and i've used it ever since now i i, I have this nice uh, what is this like a graduated cylinder or um something like that uh but the valve broke oh i don't know years ago and it's just been plugged ever since but it's an easy way to put fluid in the heads um so i kind of just use it for that as, as more or less a funnel now at this point but um uh, so when I was starting to build uh, the Suburban Tow Rig 455, which we just knocked the pistons in the other day, um, <clears throat> I had a set of 73 cylinder heads that have a larger chamber. Uh, I was gonna plug off the water passages and use them on the earlier block. And it would have left my compression ratio around eight to one, uh, maybe even a little bit less than that, maybe 7.9 or so. And then I remembered I had this set of 70 cylinder heads that I had um, had rebuilt uh, about a year and a half ago. So, uh, and they were for another project that just kind of never came to fruition. Um, I ended up going with a different set of cylinder heads anyway. And so these heads were just kind of sitting there with stock springs and stuff on them, which is gonna be perfect for um, our tow rig suburban motor here. And I'll, I'll give you the rundown on what I got going on in there real quick. Okay, so here's our 71, sub, well, this is actually a 72 block. Uh, the, the engine for our Suburban, it's a tow rig motor. The whole idea was it was kind of just made out of the pieces that were uh, somewhat left over from other builds, um, but it, it has the low compression pistons in it that you saw me put in the block the other day. Um, the camshaft, which is just a stock timing chain and gear set. Um, the cam is a 1969 um, Buick 400 cam. Uh, the reason I'm using this cam is because uh, the duration is actually shorter on this cam than it is the 455 liter cams. And I, the whole idea is low end grunt here. You just want it to have all the torque it's gonna have pretty much off idle all the way to 4,000 RPM um, for the purpose of towing, right? So generally you don't turn a lot of RPMs towing, but you just need something that has a healthy uh, bottom end, uh, you know, grunt capability to pull heavy trailers and such like that. So, uh, that's where I was going with this. Uh, and it's, you know, nothing special at all. It's just the, the lower compression eight to one pistons. And then, um, like I said, this originally was going to be 73 Buick, uh, 455 heads, but I remembered I had this set of 70 heads and, Here's where the the uh, the problem starts to occur is if you use those lower compression pistons with the earlier set of heads, which are technically 67 cc, what is your compression ratio actually going to be? So then I decided, well, OK, it doesn't need to be anything more than eight three quarters to one because I'll have a hard time getting it to run on pump gas. Um, 
So let me find out what the actual compression ratio is gonna be before I use this set of heads, and before I commit to using this set of heads, I guess. Uh, and this would give me the opportunity to, to do such a thing. And if it doesn't work out, no big deal. I'll switch over to the set of 73 cylinder heads I have and then uh, continue on with the work I have. But I thought since these were already somewhat ready to go, this would be fairly simple and it's a, uh, a learning process for just about everyone on here. So, all right, so the, the big things here on your list, if you're trying to determine a compression ratio, a static compression ratio for an engine, you need to know the basic information here, the bore, the stroke, the piston CC, which is the depth at the top of the piston, the head CC, which is the volume in your cylinder head here, right? Like how much is in the chamber. And then the head gasket thickness. And then how far the piston sits down in the bore, okay? So, you know, I got my head gaskets I'm gonna run here, which is just a uh, um, Felpro Permatorque. Um, and they're normally 43 thousandths. And then if you look at their website, they say they got five thousandths of crush. So it could be upwards of 38 thousandths when it's uh, torqued, right? But the easy thing to do here is measure the thickness of the head gasket and then kind of factor in your five thousandths crush because it won't be off that much. Um, so we're looking at <laughs> 63 thousandths, uh, 62 thousandths, okay? So with, um, well, it keeps getting smaller and smaller. Okay, let me squeeze it down a little bit more. It's showing 52 thousandths. Okay, so maybe they're gonna be close to 43 thousandths with crush, um, which means that the cylinder head has been torqued into place, okay? So 43 is a good number because if we go off of if it's larger than that, the compression ratio is gonna be even lower, but I'm just more or less concerned with how high the compression ratio is gonna be, right? So if we put 43 thousandths on here and it's actually 50 thousandths that it's crushed, it, the compression ratio would be lower. So head gasket thickness, 0 0.043, okay? So that's what we're gonna go with today for that. And we're gonna go through the rest of this stuff here. Uh, once I get everything cleaned up, I got the, uh, the cylinder head already kind of up in the fixture and the piston, same kind of deal going on here. Um, now what you do is with this piece of Lexan that you, uh, that you put on top of the piston, there is some Vaseline under it or uh, what I like to call a uh, Buick priming oil. Um, and that pretty much is gonna seal the surface there. So when we pour our liquid in here, right it won't be pouring over the sides and leaking out everywhere giving us an inaccurate reading um same thing over here okay and as you can see i got one uh i got a spark plug in there where is it at there it is and then this thing is set up to just essentially drip right down in the hole all right so what i'm going to do is take my other graduated cylinder here that actually has measurements on it you can't see too well just because of the the camera and the color of this but uh these heads are supposed to be 67 cc. Automatic transmission fluid. Automatic transmission fluid is, it'll also break down that Vaseline, but it'll take a little bit of time. But it's much more viscous and it's a little bit darker in color, but I think it's gonna allow us to get this done without eating all the fluid. So we got our spark plug in there. We got some new Vaseline on there. We got everything set up again. And we're gonna just go ahead and pour with the the graduated cylinder is again at 90, 90. All right, so we're gonna see what happens here. And I know that socket is like right in your way, but the socket is holding some extra tension on that, uh, it's holding some extra tension on that um, plexiglass in hopes that maybe a little bit more pressure will help it adhere better too. This is going to take a while. <laughs> you can see it draining, but it being much more viscous doesn't help. <laughs> so it's going really slow. Let's see here. Um, yeah, that's definitely slow. So we'll see. <laughs> we'll see what happens here in a few minutes. 
So as I'm waiting for this to fill up and it's getting awfully close, uh, I'm gonna come over here to the uh, engine block and uh, what I did is I rolled it over to top dead center. So right now it's at zero. And the whole point of this is to figure out um, how deep in the hole this piston actually is, right? Um, now it is at top dead center right now. So all I really need to do is slide the slide this over a bit and it'll raise it up. Uh, and then the difference is how far the piston is in the hole. All right, so it went from zero to 40. Uh, let's get the camera to focus. 48 thousandths in the hole, 47 thousandths. Let me move this little tab. So it's 47 and a half, 48, 47. All right, so we're 47 thousandths in the hole. Oh, man. All right, we're almost there. We're just waiting for the cylinder head CC, the piston CC, and then we can calculate our static compression ratio. All right, so it just filled up. Looks like um, we have a little bit of bubble, but it's starting to fill out now. So we'll go over here to our, let's see. That looks like uh, maybe 67, 68. Am I looking at it? So we'll call it 67, just like it uh, originally is intended to be. They're supposed to be 67 cc. So 67. All right, now we gotta do the piston the same way. Okay, so to do our, um, the top of our piston, how many cc it is, the Buicks are generally a dish like this, and that's what controls the compression ratio on most of the Buick V8s. Um, this was actually number six piston that was gonna be in this engine, and I didn't like how the rod cap fit. It was really, really tight. Uh, it was, matter of fact, to the point where it was hard to get apart. And so I thought, oh, maybe it's out around. So I'll go ahead and change it out for another piston uh, that seems to, with a rod that seems to be in better shape. Now, the reason why this thing is sitting on this four inch exhaust pipe is because it still has a rod attached. So it makes it really hard to, to do this unless I have some kind of hole in a table or whatever. So instead what I did is I propped it up on this exhaust pipe and, and then we're gonna go ahead and just CC it right through this little hole right here and I'm going to pour it straight in, uh, hopefully slowly, and it doesn't make a giant mess. We'll see. All right, so here we go. All right, so we can get probably one more CC in there. I just went ahead and did this whole thing again. It's not gonna go. All right. So we'll just say there's one more CC in there because it's literally at the top and just has a light bubble and it's starting to spill out the top just probably because there's no way for the air to escape any longer. But, um, okay, so that gives us about, let's see, there's, that's about 30, a little bit over 30, I guess, 31-ish, 31 31-ish. 31 so we'll just say that one goes in there, so we got 30 cc's. So that means we got a 30 cc dish on top of the piston which gives us our last bit of information that we need. So, all right, so now we'll go add it all up. So with our numbers plugged into the Summit website, uh, we took everything that we actually had and we also went with the uh, 5 thousandths crush on the gasket, we come up with 8.7 to one compression ratio. Oh, hey, and don't forget, we are having an event called the No Name Nationals. 
Sykeston, Missouri, September 30th, October 1st. Uh, it's at Jeffers Motorsports Park. You can register, you can pre-register on uh, nonamenationals.com. You can even buy pre-registered spectator tickets on there. You'll save yourself five bucks on the spectator ticket. Uh, at the gate, it's going to be 20 Um Pre-registered is $15 a day. So make sure you head on over to nonamenationals.com and get yourself enrolled.